Welcome back. It is Monday, March 11th in the NBA. Our three favorite picks are on the way. It's Austin joined by Logan. It is the start of a new week. Let's hopefully dominate and go 3-0 and and bring out the brooms. Now, if you recall, Logan got to bring out the brooms on yesterday because we swept on Saturday. Fortunately, yesterday was the uh, inverse of that, an 0-3 today. You're not giving it all back. And, man, Logan and I could probably go on a rant for each probably like five minutes about just some bad luck. And we always talk about the NBA and really any sport. You're going to have some good variants. You're going to have some bad variants. Yesterday, we got all the bad variants. I'll start with my prop of the day, Sadiq Bay's over in points. Uh, poor one out for me at 14 points, basically going into the fourth quarter, got injured. Looked like he hyperextended his knee, did not play the final 11 minutes, and that's kind of how we lost our best prop of the day. Then Logan, he could rant about the Clippers plus three. I mean, you'd make the pick, and then they sit Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. I don't really think you would have backed them without two of their best players, but of course they lose by seven, probably win that game outright if they at least uh, have one of those guys, but they didn't even have either of them. And the final pick was the Heat and Wizards over. We were praying for some overtime for a little bit of good luck, but once those first two picks kind of fell, we knew we weren't getting OT, and the Heat messed around and lost outright the Washington Wizards. So uh, you just have to laugh and just say chalk it up to the game. One of those days at Sunday NBA just is what it is. You know, we're still racking a little bit over the 41-unit mark. Kind of hopefully we can get into some momentum this week. We've had a really good track record since the beginning of February. Let's hopefully dominate today. And, Logan, I'm going to start with my favorite prop of the day first and foremost. But I do want to talk about something that's pretty cool and pretty important today. If you're in North Carolina, sports betting goes live, I believe, at 12 p.m. Eastern time. So down below in the description, you'll have a link to a bunch of different sports books. If you want to sign up using our links, they not only come with a great, a great a bunch of you know deposit matches and bonus offers, it also supports Logan and I if you use those links. So congrats to, to North Carolina, one of the newest states in the U.S. getting sports betting, finally legalized today right around lunchtime. So I love you. Welcome to sports betting, North Carolina. But without further ado, let's dive into the picks. So today, the first one is going to be a guy that is one of the latest games of the slate. So you shouldn't have you have plenty of time to get this locked in my favorite play of the day is anthony simons over 21 and a half points minus 115 on bet 365 now if you're looking at a bunch of other books every book was at 21 and a half when i posted this i believe Fandle did not have a line for this game and rightfully so because each team has so many different injury uh, question marks i mean you have the boston celtics coming into portland not jalen brown Kristaps is definitely out but jalen brown jason tatum drew holiday Derek white almost everyone on the celtics is on the injury report who knows who plays and then on the flip side you've got the, the blazers team who have a bunch of guys on the injury report too malcolm brogdon and shade and sharp both should be out but you also got jeremy grant questionable scoot henderson just returned last game he might be on a minute restriction that kind of capped him off at 25 minutes off the bench in their last game. We'll see about that. But I really think Simons is a good chance here because what the Celtics really struggle against defensively is guys that are not are willing to take those pull-up jump shots. If you think about how the Celtics play defense, obviously they have the great card t- tandem in terms of Derek White and Drew Holiday. They make life, dif- life difficult, but when they're getting set screens on, the guys that are normally supposed to be guarding them on the pick and roll, guys like Chris Stapps, guys like Luke Cornett, Al Horford, those guys are sagging off pretty low. And in turn, you see the Celtics with the number one most pull-up shots in the NBA. Anthony Simons is not afraid of taking those shots. If he comes off a screen and he has an open opportunity, he's firing it up there, especially given that the Blazers are so banged up. And I don't see a good matchup for really any of his other teammates. And we've seen Anthony really been good recently. I mean, he's over this line in five straight games. And we know he's capable and shoot has the volume to get to a 21 and a half line. Now, you could say, Austin, this could be a blowout. Now, right now, the spread sits at Celtics minus eight. If you think anyone is waking up and betting the Blazers plus eight, you're probably out of your mind. No one's going to be on the Blazers. So I'm not saying take the Blazers if you want to fade the public, but I guarantee you the Blazers by the end of the day, regardless of how many people on the Celtics are in or out, no one's going to be on them. And I really think Simons is going to have an opportunity here to shoot 15 to 20 times. And if he's making his shots, he'll shoot even more. And you look at his other props, his three-point prop set to three and a half. If him to make three threes is about minus 250. So they're really saying, hey, we think he makes three of them in this season when he's made three threes, which he's done in 26 games. He's over this line in 77% of games, averaging 27 points per game in games that he's made three or more threes. So I really think there's a spot where you still get a low line because they're like, hey, there could be a blah. And we have a lot of respect for Drew Holiday and Derek White. But I really do think this is a spot where we're going to see Anthony Simons be pretty aggressive. 
We've always seen him typically try to step up in those bigger games, and there's no bigger game, no bigger game really than the best team in the NBA record-wise coming into your arena. You got to go out there and ball out. There's going to be a lot of Celtics fans in the crowd tonight too. Should be a pretty packed stadium, even though Portland has nothing to play for this year, late in the year. It's Boston coming into Portland. I really like Anthony Simons as my best play of the day, but we're throwing it to Logan. He's got a spread that he really likes, and Logan, I'm gonna let you take it away. Who are you rocking with tonight? Uh, yeah, you said no one will be on the Blazers. My pick today is that no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I'm, ta- I'm taking the Mavs minus four and a half, minus 105 odds on Bet MGM. Currently, your best value there. Now, uh, this is kind of on Logan like you know, you guys know, 10 I tend to not fall on the side of the extremely public bets. This is probably the most public bet I've bet, but all year. But given the slate today, I don't like anything else. Sometimes pe- bu- public bets do win in the Mavs. Are great on the road. 19 and 11 ATS as favorites, 27 and 11 uh, straight up on the year is this Dallas Mavericks team. So I think I, I think we we really are getting some decent value here, especially given what, what the Bulls are doing. The Bill, the Bulls, two and five ATS in their last seven home games. I'm not rushing out to back this Bulls team at all. I think honestly, when it comes down to it, this number is just too low, and it could be a sucker bet probably is a sucker bet, but I don't care. With a total set to 233 in this game, I have to ask myself, which team do I see doing the majority of the damage? And that's going to be the Dallas Mavericks. Chicago's defense is average at best. 19th in opponents shooting efficiency, 16th in opponents threes percentage, 29th and 30th in opponents three-point made and three-point attempted. They're giving it up in a lot of da- very dangerous areas to give it up to, especially with this Dallas Mavericks team. I'm asking the Mavs to show up and make shots, which they're fully capable of doing. Dallas, eighth in shooting efficiency and third and second and three-point made and three-point attempted. Again, the Bulls are giving up the threes. The Mavs love taking threes. This is that's how you that's how this game could turn ugly really fast. And we're just hoping the shots fall. At the end of the day, we can't go out and make the shots. Just like that Heat Wizards game last night. Oh, brutal. So many wide open threes just clank. And I was like, ah. Oh. But it's just how it, how it goes in this sport. If this game turns high scoring, though, the Bulls could easily fall behind. At home, the Bulls, 24th in points scored, 25th in field goal percentage, 27th in three-point percentage. I just don't like the offense. I don't like how this Bulls offense is run. All it takes is you watch in a few games of Bulls offense to be like, who who gets the ball consistently? It's the Rose and ISO. It's sometimes some some Vucevic hook shots, and and outside of that, Kobe White. It, maybe Kobe White catches fire. Hopefully, they can contain a guy like that because he's he's probably that type of player is the one that scares me. But the Bulls don't attempt or make a lot of threes either. Dallas doesn't have to be perfect on defense, just good enough. Contest some shots, just. Be, make your shots on the offensive end, and the Mavs should be able to run away with the cover down the stretch. I'm not getting cute. I'm taking a Bulls team that plays incredibly slow and can't keep up with the Mavs shooting because that's just a recipe for disaster. I think the Mavs minus four and a half, well, the, probably the squarest bet I've picked this year, I think it stands a really good chance of cashing. Come on, Luca. Luca and Kyrie show up in a big way for us today. But Austin, tossing it back to you for your third pick. Yeah, Logan's being a little square today. And I'm taking a prop market that I absolutely hate. So what could go wrong on a start to a Monday? But my my final pick of the day, our third and final pick, is an assist prop. And it's going to be a guy by the name of Victor Wembenyama. Over three and a half assists, minus 120 on BetMGM. Now, we haven't had the best luck on assist props this season. But I really do think this is one that we do see fall through the hoop. And I think we get four assists from Mr. Wembenyama. Now, obviously, I don't take a ton of assist props because I don't typically like to ask two people to do their jobs. And we're going to need Wemby to not only pass it, but his teammates to make shots. But given they're at home, I think there's a lot of different ways this one could hit. And I really think this line should be closer to four and a half at like plus 110 or minus 110. So I think we're getting some good value here, given that Wemby's coming off a couple games where he did not play. So he's going to come in here. Will he be on a full minutes? Probably not. But we've seen Wembenyama. I'm going to play, you know, 27, 30 minutes and still crush this line before. And I really think this is a spot that I want to back him. Now, if the line does get bumped up a little bit, I do like it up to about minus 150. If you want to play something spicy like a 10 rebounds and four assists, or heck, if you want to take his over and rebounds plus assists, I don't hate that either, as he has a huge size advantage tonight against the Warriors. As the Warriors' last game with Steph Curry out, who remains out tonight, they went to a weirdo line. They went to Trace Jackson Davis, the rookie out of Indiana, I believe. They threw him in at center. got Draymond in there. 
the truth of the matter is they got no one that can match up against Wembenyama, and I really don't think they're going to try to match up against Wemby. I think they're going to let him get the ball in the paint potentially. Double teams coming his way, and we've seen Wemby. He's a very capable and willing passer, and that's all we're looking for. We're not asking for Wembenyama to become you know, Steve Nash or Tony Parker. No, we're not asking him to do that. We're just having to get four assists, and he's done that plenty of times this season. In fact, you look at their, his only matchup against the Warriors this season all the way back in November. So it's been a long time. Wembenyama has obviously changed a lot and has you know over the last you know five months since that game but in that game against golden state he did have four assists he cashed the over nine potential assists he made 40 passes which is about what he's been averaging the last 10 games six turnovers so you know they kind of threw some wrinkles in there and they kind of caused Wemby to turn the ball over obviously he's been a little bit more you know controlled with the ball and i just think when he gets the ball unless it's at the top of the key they'll let him go one-on-one against like draymond out there but when he gets the ball inside the paint I don't see him getting any open looks. I think they're going to be like, all right, someone else has got to make that some jump shots. Jeremy Sohan, you go make a three-pointer before we give Wemben Yama a free hook shot or a free dunk of some sort like that. So we've seen over the last 10 games, Wemby has averaged nearly five assists per game on about eight potential assists. He's had four assists in seven of his last 10, and he's had a high floor, three assists in nine of his last 10 games. And you look at his last two home games, six and seven assists. And in fact, he has four assists hitting this over in seven of his last nine home games, and he has three assists in all of his last nine home games. The only two games he went under, he had three on the dot. That was against the Maver- Magic and the Cavaliers, two really stingy defenses. So, look, I'm not a big assist prop guy, but I really feel this line is a little bit too low for when Benyama. Could he be on a minutes restriction tonight? Sure. And maybe you get some better value if that gets released throughout the day, but I don't see him being on a minutes restriction like 15 or 20 at minimum 25, and there's a chance they let him play 30, 35 minutes. I think he's going to have some good opportunity tonight. This is one of the highest over-unders on the slate, and let's just hope it's not a Knicks versus Sixers game because if you had any props, overs, and Knicks, Sixers yesterday, I apologize to you because that was an absolute disaster of a game. But I really like Wemby tonight. My second favorite prop of the day, over three and a half assists. Our three favorite picks, Anthony Simons over in points, Wemby Yamas over in assists, and Logan's pick Mavericks minus four and a half. But Logan, before we dive out of here, is there any other picks that you uh, you looked at on the slate? I mean, I know it is a short, short slate. You obviously don't want to force a ton of picks. Anything else that maybe stuck out to you, maybe for a lean? Uh, no, no, because you know why? Because there's a bunch <laughs> of injury concerns in the other ones. You yeah, got a short yeah. slate. You got a short slate and injury concerns. I learned my heart the hard way yesterday. What happens with teams randomly with with the garbage uh, Clippers load management? So we're not going to force anymore. I do like just the one pick I have. Hopefully, Luca. If Luca or Kyrie gets gets ruled out, no, I don't still like that pick. <laughs> And might I'm not screwed. see Logan tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you might not see him tomorrow. But another prop that I did look at was Darius Garland. But like Logan said, I'm not going to touch a Garland prop until it's official that a Donovan Mitchell is out. So the first time I touch a Garland prop, I just know Donovan Mitchell goes from unlikely to, hey, by the way, he's playing today. And then everyone that took Suns money line trying to get great value is probably in a tough spot. But three picks today, going to keep it light and simple. It's a short slate. So three picks, hopefully a three and a sweep bounce back after just an anomaly of a day yesterday just we're just going to forget about that sunday because that did not really ref- we really shouldn't have had an zero and three day but it is what it is we're moving on and a reminder if you want to sign up for sports betting it is now in north carolina use our links top links in the description austin logan signing out we'll see you guys back again tomorrow for some more picks see you then peace